I went out to Fenway Park yesterday uh, to draw it. Actually, I went to help a neighbor go to the hospital for a checkup and a colonoscopy, if you must know. And I, he said, well, what are you going to do for two hours? And I said, well, I'll draw Fenway Park. I've always wanted to, and I never have. And <clears throat> his procedure was going to be two hours long, and I thought, well, I'll do drawings in two hours. And I did drawings for just one hour, and then was got a call from him saying he had to go to the hospital because he was there's a problem with his heart. So anyway, he's better now, or at least not in danger. And um, but I I drew for an hour, and I walked around the building. And I didn't quite know what I was going to be looking for, but, and I don't know whether I found it, but this is what I came up with. And um, I also remembered what my favorite artist, Saul Steinberg, said about baseball stadiums. He was hired by Life magazine, I think, or Newsweek, or one of those when they used to have magazines, to uh, be a journalist, as, as it were, uh, to illustrate the baseball games. And he came up with some really fun images of, of the, uh, the sport. But what was interesting to him more was the buildings that they were in. And he described a typical baseball stadium as if it looked like two riverboats colliding, a collision of two riverboats, you know, this paddle wheel steamer kind of things, because that's what they look like. They're, they're open-air, outdoor events, venues, and you don't want to spend a nickel more than you have to building these things, so you don't have a roof, you don't have sides, it's just a uh, uh, complete lattice work of girders and stuff. And occasionally you'll have a front door, if you have such a thing, a uh, main entry. And that was this area here. So Fenway Park, it was a brick building, brick entrance, and then behind it was the green um, collision of riverboats. And uh, so I started here, and then I walked around uh, clockwise uh, around the, the building. The second drawing I did is this one. Now what I did was on this particular, for this particular series on my iPad, I started with this green. Well, you can't see that it's green. I guess you can sometimes, depending on on um, how my camera is recording this, but I started with this green. Um, and so that's the base color for all of the other drawings I did. Each one is a layer on this particular device. So when I got done with this drawing, I would then make that invisible, and then I would start drawing the second layer. So the second layer is this one. And it's gate E, which was around the corner and down a piece. I don't know if I had passed gates B and C and D, but I may have. I wasn't really paying attention until I saw this thing out of the side. So I'm looking down the along uh, straight line of the building, and you saw all of these external stairways um, uh, going down to the street level. And again, there was occasionally some red brick stuff going on with red banners and red letters saying what gate it was. And, but I kept on looking up at, I'm on the ground again, looking up at all of this stuff. And I was thinking that it didn't so much look like two steamships uh, riverboats colliding. It looked more like I was on the deck of an aircraft carrier because 
the of all naval warships that were ever made the aircraft carrier is the ugliest um it just looks like it doesn't belong um you know there's something it's an abomination leviticus would have had something to say about that thou shalt not have airplanes landing in the middle of the ocean so saith the admiral nimitz so um it just it, it reminded me of that so i'm looking up you know instead of seeing this thing i would have seen a you know anti-aircraft gun turret or conning tower or mast or something um so that was what i was thinking as i saw this the third drawing i did again this was right out of the um, playbook of what I would draw if I was on an aircraft carrier. Um, you know, it might be below decks on the hangar level and, you know, coming up with the elevator with the F-16 or B-352 or the B-52 band or whatever, whatever, air, whatever they have. As I said, it's an abomination. There was this yellow thing. I don't know what that is sticking up. Here are the um, stadium lights. Um, again, a little bit of brick. I'm not one to draw the entire thing. I draw details of an entire thing. I zoom in on something that's actually interesting and rivets and junctures of, um, girders, um, are just fascinating to me. And you know, watching a building being built is much more interesting than seeing the finished product. I apologize to all the architects out there, but it's just too bad. I realize that you're seeing such a tiny part of this, but you'll just have to deal with it. I, my screen is, I can see my recording screen is mainly dark, but that's just too bad. Um, fitting a square peg into a round hole I guess I could move the camera down a little bit, but anyway, um, so there's this one, and it's just a, I don't know what I would call this. Write your answers below. What should I call this? Clusterfuck has already been taken. Um, zooming in even further, you see just, you know, three girders four girders together. Uh, and then <clears throat> continuing along that street, I turned the corner, I looked up, and here was the big uh, LED scoreboard. And I don't know which, where the green monster is. Is it underneath this thing? It might be. It's because I wasn't inside. I couldn't tell where. I think it was here. Because I think these are all stadium seats, which would go down to the regulation field, uh, and where the Boston Stadium existed, they they couldn't make a regulation one, I guess, or something. I don't know what. Um, I guess it has to be regulation, wouldn't it? But they don't have seats; they just have a wall which they refer to as the green monster because evidently if it was uh, a grandstand, the ball would end up going into the grandstand and it would be a home run. But here it can bounce off this thing and someone could catch it and you'd be out. So maybe that's why it's a monster. See, I learn things every day. I figure things out every day. And if I'm wrong, uh, let me know. <laughs> um, looking back, I'm still on that wall. Here's that uh, flat screen TV thing, scorecard thing. Back in the olden days, they would, you know, change these things with a human with a little number. Back when, back when I was a kid, and now they 
and they had the little flippy thing like you have at the train station and now I suppose it's all digital like okay you've just ruined all sorts of fun stuff you know back in the olden day when someone could put the nine in upside down it would be a six and people would boo and hiss and drag him out by his legs and slaughter him on the field for making such a mistake but now they they just press a button um, so here you see the little red socks of the red sock logo and on a banner going across the street and a marquee for another entrance I guess I don't know what entrance number that is and then I turn the corner again and it was a long street that was really, really boring. And um, they had statues of famous Bostonian players uh, made of bronze, and they were boring. And they had, you know, the back of a gas station that was boring. It was completely boring. And then I turned the corner again. And that was kind of interesting, but it was really, really hot. And I couldn't... I wasn't very comfortable. So I ended up almost back where I started from and ordered a Coca-Cola, a Diet Coca-Cola, for $5. This one right here. This one. This right here cost $5. The woman selling it to me said she knew. Yeah, I know, I know, it's crazy. Five dollars. And uh, right here, near gate number one, the, the first drawing I did was a little bit to the right of where I'm drawing here. Gate A. This is gate A, I guess. Um, was some plaque that probably described the building of, of Fenway Park. And, um, but it was the shadow of this sign here, which I put in the wrong place. Yes, I know. I can see that it's in the wrong place. I'm sorry. Um, but I was, I was suffering heat stroke. And it was at this point when I got a phone call from my friend that was supposed to be getting a colonoscopy saying he was on his way to the hospital with a heart attack or something. So, but as I said, he's, he's doing okay. Um, but the reason I'm talking about this is because I have this various device, th this particular device I'm drawing these things on, I'm able to create a different kind of a, a thing with this so I can record it. And let's say I was, I think I've been to one, one of these games in my life, um, but I, I'm not entirely positive on that, but let's, I, I don't find sports interesting and I don't find baseball very interesting. The only thing I like about baseball is each team member is seen front and center. You know, they might be, they're not all, they're prima donna for, until they strike out. You know, they might be a great catcher, but they wouldn't know which end of a bat to use. But they all have to be on the home plate and trying to hit a ball thrown at them by an adult. Uh, my father and I once played catch in the front yard. <clears throat> He gave me a brand new baseball mitt, which I loved. I loved the leather of it. I loved the stitching of it. I loved everything about it, and I would wear it to bed. And But the idea of actually catching something with it seemed just stupid. He and I went out in the front yard, and we're throwing it back and forth, and I, he would throw it toward me, and I would step out of the way, and I'd watch it go under the bushes, and then I would, he said, well, you're supposed to catch it. And I said, oh, am I? So I would go get it, and I'd throw it back to him, and, Maybe it made half made it halfway to him. I was not a very strong child. And he would try again with me, and I tried to catch it, but it went, you know, clearly past me. And he, he and I looked at each other, and we, we didn't say this out loud, but we said this in unison. 
This is the stupidest thing ever. Let's go back inside the house and draw. So that's my baseball history. Anyway, I hear that people find this interesting. And people yay and they boo and they want to kill the umpire and they want to kill the scorecard guy and they want to kill the pitcher and the belly itcher and all the other people. So I was trying to figure out how can I show the excitement. I know I can draw the two steamboats colliding with each other, but I haven't shown the excitement of the game. So I was thinking maybe what I could do is make a movie of it, which I'm doing right now, even though I haven't, the movie hasn't done anything other than be green. So what I can do with this uh, device is I can um, play around with the layers and add things to it. So I'm going to just add some greens here like this, just to sparkle it up a bit. And now I'm going to go to this one. I'm going to add this layer. So now you've got a double exposure. And I'm going to add some more greens to it. Except I did this on the wrong layer. That's okay. I can do that. It's fine. I have, I have the power. I don't know if I did that the right way. I'm going to add yet another layer to it. <clears throat> and this is sort of the chaos of, of any activity. You know, you see your eyes are, are distracted. You're looking at three different things at the same time. You're listening to the, the scorecard. You could looking through the binoculars. You're buying peanuts. You're just doing all sorts of crazy stuff. And um, so, again, I'll see if this turns out to be anything interesting. And it might very well not. But that's what's fun about adding some of the red. I can clear that. And then I'm going to add that. Take that one out. Take that one out. And that one out. So now it's just this layer is why it isn't so clusterfucky. And we go back up to here and we add a couple more things. And now we go to this one. And this is the scorecard or the whatever they call it. The display. And now we can add some things here. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. I hate when that happens. There's a button that flips it, and it's always in the way. And I'm always flipping my drawing until I realize it's too late. So imagine what's a what's a heavy metal band in the background playing Take Me Out to the Ball Game when you're watching this movie. And then I'm going to end with the same, I'm going to end with the, oops, I may have done that wrong. I'm going to end with the first drawing. And then we'll go back to Calm. Let's see what happens here. Okay, I'm going to clear that. And then I'm going to, oh shit, oh dear, clear that. And now we're back to the beginning, I think. So let's see what this looks like. Stop. So here's, the, here's my animation. I'll make it go fast. This is a little sm slower. I don't know. Does it deserve an Emmy? I mean, <clears throat> this might be interesting to see. Let's say it was on a loop and you saw it on the big screen rather than ads for Coca-Cola, $5 Coca-Colas. 
know as people are getting their seats and ordering their $15 hot dogs. Um, I just, I think that there's wings to this sort of way where it would be sort of kind of fun to, as you're looking at the, you know, like, what is this? People don't know. They think it looks a little bit like the outside of the stadium. You don't know, and you're trying to find something, and and then you see it. Um, you know, maybe w what I would do is have in between this sort of collagey stuff, I'd have the actual an actual image of it, and then you go back to the confusing stuff, and then back to a, a another finished image. It's like when you're at an orchestra and you're waiting for the conductor to come out and all of the all of the members of the orchestra are practicing and they're tuning up and they're they're practicing the hard part of the piece that they have to play in 10 minutes or they're practicing the hard part of the piece they're going to play next week and you hear bits and pieces of the music played by only one instrument and it's just, it's this beautiful sound, I think. Most people would think it's really, really ugly, I suppose. But I find it fascinating because I, I like the chaos that you see or hear, in that case, at the orchestra. And, but um, it's sort of, it's really fun. So that's what I, what, that's what I'm sort of trying to get at by, by recording this thing the way I just did. So now I'm going to do, do something. I'm going to back to gallery. I'm going to discard changes. I, I can't remember whether I, I guess I did. The, the original drawings I did, um, I had done two or three other drawings, which I saved in a file. They weren't of Fenway Park. They were of the buildings opposite the street, uh, which included, you know, they all had the same Fenway colors, the green paint for some reason. I don't know if they're associated with, with uh, Fenway Park in any way. They're just, I think, souvenir shops and stuff, but they had that same green color. Maybe they had leftover paint and they were willing to give it to the neighboring building, sell it to the neighboring buildings along with their Coca-Cola. So, um, but I decided for my little movie I just made, I would leave these out. Anyway, ta-da. Thank you.